Well, now it's time to wait with Anne. There is a long day, it's safe to say. We'll have some fun today on Geek World Radio. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Geek World Radio. So, in light of the news of the Veronica Mars movie being funded through Kickstarter, we're going to take a look at what that means for Kickstarter as a whole and the movie making industry. So Rob Thomas and Kristen Bell got together and they were trying to get two million dollars from people and basically within a day, like 11 hours, they were able to reach where they were trying to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I think this is really great. Now I understand people who might be worried about Kickstarter and the future of some other artists. But at the end of the day, I feel like this is a really cool way for people who are fans to actually get something they want. Warner Brothers is never going to make this movie, okay? Rob Thomas and Kristen Bell have been talking for years. I swear, every interview they've ever done, someone has asked them about, a, about when are we going to see a Veronica Mars movie. But it was never going to happen because it wasn't going to be profitable. Now, finally, the fans, they got the power to be able to make it happen. I think that's awesome. Now, I love Veronica Mars, and I'm actually really happy that it's going to happen. On the other hand, in the world of Kickstarter, I don't know that I want this to set a precedent. You know, I don't want every single show that gets kicked off the air to start some sort of Kickstarter campaign and kind of take the attention away from other campaigns, from from independent filmmakers, from people who can't get the funding elsewhere. They asked for $2 million for the Veronica Mars movie. Now, the grand scheme of things, that's not that much money for a movie. But when you think about it, They could have gotten that money probably from a lot of other sources. They have other connections to places that invest in film. I mean, that's a good point, anime, but basically there was a deal done between Rob Thomas and Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers was never going to make this movie. Rob Thomas was like, hey, I want to do it. There's a lot of people who want to do it, so Warner Brothers said, prove it. Basically, the deal was that if Rob Thomas could come up with the money to shoot the movie, Warner mm-hmm. Brothers would pay to distribute it and to market it, and that itself is a lot of money. Right. So I feel like, you know what, this was a way for him to actually be able to come up with it instead of going to, like, you know, like, uh, Pet Boys and being like, hey, give us $2 million. And you know, they were like, hey, how do we even know if there's people who want to see this movie? This proves they're not only people who want to see the movie, but people willing to chip in to see the movie made. That's true. And, you know, and in terms of Veronica Mars, like I said, you know, I, I am really glad that it's happening. But think about Kick-Ass. Think about how Matthew Vaughn funded that. He had a dinner party and essentially went to his friends and went, hey, guys, I really want to make this movie. You want to help? And that dinner party essentially got his movie funded. That's you know, true. That's it, true. I mean, th- that's a good point. But Kick-Ass also, you know, it's a superhero movie. It was a superhero movie that was coming out right at the time where superhero movies were getting really huge. Right. And I think the thing is, it's like, you know, there was that audience there, too. But Veronica Mars, like, that's the kind of thing, like, wh- are they ever going to make it? It almost became a joke. Right. They were never going to make this movie, you know? And I think the thing is, it's like... It had, this is the only way this would have ever gotten done. Okay, but you're keeping this fully in terms of Veronica Mars. Mm-hmm. We're talking about what this means for Kickstarter as a whole. Try and take it away from Veronica Mars and put it towards a show that you don't care about. Okay, that's a good point. Well, this is how I look at it. You know, the, kicks, the, the Kickstarter is just the venue for which they can make their case. Right. You know what I mean? It's a pitch, basically. But nobody's forcing these people to give money. And not mm-hmm. only that, I don't think a lot of people understand what Kickstarter is all about. If you give, like, you know, a dollar, that's just giving a dollar. But really, after that, like, for instance, on Veronica Mars, if you gave $10, you got, a, like, a PDF of the script, right? right? If you gave $35, you'll get, like, a digital download of the movie a few days after release and, like, a t-shirt. And then it goes on and on with all kind of crazy things. We can offer all sorts of cool rewards to people who donate. Things like signed movie posters or tickets to the premiere or even an associate producer credit. I mean... Imagine the possibilities. I could record outgoing voicemail messages for fans who donate. And there's incentive to to do this. And thank you for making my next point for me. There you go. You've got all of these ridiculous incentives for something like Veronica Mars. Like one of them is you can get all of the DVDs for all of the seasons. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take some of my money and I'm gonna put it into a project. What am I gonna choose? Well, you know, some people that that maybe are just kind of like looking for th- different things to invest in. Instead of investing in the small indie project, maybe they're just gonna do the thing that has the best rewards. Certain people aren't going to be able to compete with that kind of thing. But I mean, I, I don't see why that's a problem. The whole point is is that you put money into something that you appreciate. Right. 
And the thing is, it's like, Kickstarter has always been about, like, helping out the little guy, the little artist. And I think it's going to stay that way. You know, BuzzFeed did a little article where they said this whole thing was a fluke. You know, like, a large percentage of the people went in and paid the money. You know, they got Kickstarter accounts Mm -hmm. just so they could do this. Right. You know, I mean, a lot of them were people who had never ever bid before on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I just think it's one of those specific things. I don't think this is going to take away from what Kickstarter has already been doing. But think about this. As soon as the money started accruing for the Veronica Mars movie, all of these other shows, you had like the guys from Chuck being like, maybe we should do this with Chuck. You had like all of these other shows going, hey, maybe we can do this with our show. Maybe Pushing Daisies can come back as a movie. Maybe, you know, maybe this, maybe that. What happens when all of a sudden Kickstarter becomes completely saturated by these big studios, by these big producers bringing in their big projects and kind of making it so that the little guys can't even be seen anymore. I mean, that's a very good point and a very valid point, anime. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, you know, this Veronica Mars thing is a little unprecedented, you know. It is the biggest ever for a film project. And I agree. I mean, uh, Zachary Levi is always like, hey guys, let's do a Chuck movie. Brian Fuller was like, yo, can we do a Pushing Daisies movie? And the thing is, at the end of the day, for Veronica Mars, not only uh, can they do it for $2 million, because mm-hmm. it's just investigating people talking, but it is a cult show right. that never got a fair shake. It was on UPN. Do you guys even know what that is? <laughs> for two years. And then the CW and its third season for the first year of CW. And so I don't think it really got its chance. It's one of those big cult shows like Firefly. But most of these other shows, they kind of ended for a reason. Like Chuck like got a very fair, very fair, like, run. It got, like, five seasons. Yeah. What it shouldn't have, frankly. And then, like, you know, Pushing Daisies was a cool show, but you know what? It was also a weird show, and weird shows don't always make it that long. Mm -hmm. And so, at the end of the day, I completely agree with you. That could happen. It could ruin Kickstarter. But you know what? At the same time, it's sort of like a weapon, you know? It's like, which way is... What is it used for? To protect or to harm, you know? I mean... It, it, it is it is a tough decision, but for me, I love that. But Kickstarter does have parameters. Like if you're in the technology field, if you're trying to make software, that's supposed to be left up to the developer. It's not something that you're supposed to try and fund through Kickstarter. In the same way, where does that kind of cutoff come when it comes to things like filmmaking, movie making? Where does it go when it should be left to the studios to handle and not be you know not be something that's that's given off to the fans to to deal with? You know, and in that respect, are they going to now change the rules so that now after Veronica Mars, other big projects, other big studio kind of things don't get that kind of uh, unfair advantage? It's so true, you know, and that's really the main question, right? Is that, you know, is this Veronica Mars just going to be the one thing or is this opening the floodgates? Are we now going to have to all pitch in for Avengers 2 to come out? You know, and and that's what everyone fears. You know, that's the conspiracy theory. It's like, you know what? If you want to see a Batman reboot, you better pay money because Warner Bros. is like, I don't know if this is going to make money. Uh, And and it's I think it's a valid point to a point. But at the same time, I also think that, you know, the power is in the people's hands. This is not like a tax. You know, you have to choose to go to Kickstarter, to log in, to to give that money. I mean, this is all a choice. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's only because this was such a cult show and people want to see it so bad. If it was like, if if Nicolas Cage was like, yo, I want to make Ghost Rider 3 pitch in... I don't think it would do as well as Veronica Mars. That's true. I definitely agree with you there. But this could be a way for studios to kind of start skirting around having investors that they have to pay back. Because that's the whole thing with Kickstarter. You are providing money to something because you want to see it happen, but you don't get a stake in it. You don't get paid back. You get your little perk that they offer you. It might be something as big as a speaking role in the movie like it is with Veronica Mars. But you don't get any sort of investment stakes in it. I mean, it's true anime, and and, and that's really the name of the game, isn't it? I don't know. Is this going to ruin Kickstarter? Is this the coolest thing ever? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. Either way, I think we've had a really good discussion about this. And uh, guys, make sure to watch us next Wednesday. We're going to have another fun topic. I don't know if it'll be Kickstarter related or not. Probably not. But perhaps. Either way, if you guys want to listen to our radio show, we're on every week on Indie 100 and The Point. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can send us an email to geekworldradio at yahoo.com and check out our website, geekworldradio.com. All right, guys. Don't forget to bring back up. <laughs> Bye! Well, now it's time to with Anne. Some days, it's safe to say we'll have
have some fun today on Geek World Radio.